Let's go ahead and read this right over here. It comes with some bounding in the comics. The Acolyte lead Amandla Stenberg reiterates her Star Wars series intention to subvert the Force. Says story will explore what it means to be on the light side or the dark side. So, uh, is that the black chick? Is that her? Yeah. She plays May. Gray, how do you feel about Acolyte and yeah, how awful it's, like, it's going to be? Yeah, it's it's going to suck. It's, 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 it's going to suck hard. hard. We're, we're probably going to meme a lot on that light whip. <laughs> the light whip that we, we played last week with Alan. Like that, oh, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, they're they're grasping on straws. Like, oh, what's the most obscure detail in Star Wars that we think our people are gonna think it's so cool? And then they came up with the light whip, which apparently is just a Sith weapon, according to Star Wars girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's gonna suck, man. It's it's you know it's they're gonna preach all about their sexual identity and stuff like that. That's what's gonna happen, and we'll be here to talk about it next next week. Yeah. Let's see. And further confirmation that Disney and Lucasfilm aim to continue the current tr- media trend of portraying any and all villains as a sympathetic and sorry, as sympathetic as and misunderstood. The acolyte lead Amanda Stenberg has affirmed that the upcoming Star Wars series will center on exploring what is uh, what it means to be on the light side or the dark side of the force. Uh, Stenberg provided this tease of the Acolyte's narrative during a recent interview given to Empire Magazine in a promotion series upcoming premiere. Uh, asked by the, the outlet's Ben Travis if sh- she could recall how showrunner and former Harvey Weinstein <laughs> assistant Leslie Headlands had mm-hmm. pitched the series to her, the actress began, the show was actually pitched to me in visual form. I had a meeting with Leslie and Lucas creative executive uh, Rain Roberts. We sat down for some brunch and they opened uh, up this iPad with concept art that had been conceptualized with me in it. Even at that point, details were being held from me. So I was extrapolating what I could base off of those images, but I understood that it was an exploration of the light and dark parts of ourselves and the rules in the galaxy around how the force can be used, which was insane to experience that. Oh man. To this end, Travis later noted that not only did he feel that the acolyte really seems to get into the light side and dark side uh, dynamic, but also that her character, May, uh, leaned more towards the dark side. In response to this speculation, Stenberg asserted, I think it's a lot more complicated than that, which is the point of the show. Hopefully, she concluded, if we did our jobs right, the show makes an interesting interrogation into what it means to be the light and the dark side. Yeah, I think this shit's going to fucking be awful. But yeah. the thing is that we could be wrong, though, right? This could look all look ass and butts. But le- how about if it's actually really good? The story is really good. The characters are really, really compelling. Because according to this article from The Direct, Star Wars Acolyte Reviews, critics share strong first impressions. What does strong mean? Strong meaning very, <laughs> it's very, I, very I'm good. I'm assuming good. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. It's, you, you know, these are the same people who gave the Doctor Who reboot a 100, a 100 in Rotten Tomatoes. So not surprising <laughs> that do the same for the Acolyte. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see what these strong first reactions mean. Okay. So. The Acolyte has its first official showings for critics who shared overwhelmingly strong reactions to the new Disney Plus series from Star Wars. Star Wars' newest series will take fans back in time to the High Republic era, providing a look at the earliest point in the on-screen Star Wars timelines to date, marking the first time in Star Wars history that a project features a Sith in the leading roles. The Acolyte will bring plenty of epic lightsaber and force-wielding action in a story working as a prequel. Wait. Marking the first time in Star Wars history that a project features a Sith in the leading row. What the fuck was Anakin then? Yeah. Because we know that he becomes a bad guy, so... I... What? Okay, maybe... Okay, maybe the term leading role is like... Right? They're gunning for the Wookiees in Star Wars, in Lucasfilm, are like... 
there's no good and evil in Star Wars. It doesn't. It doesn't matter whose side you're on. So like, they're. I think they're trying to frame it in such a way that the Sith are the good guys. That's why this is the first time the Sith has a leading role. That's what I think. Hmm. Yeah, you could be right. Let's see. Uh, all right, critics' first reactions. All right, so the first one from Gizmodo. Uh, following the first premiere event for Star Wars The Acolyte, critics shared their initial reactions to what they saw in the first two episodes on X. Gizmodo's Jermaine Lucier called the first two episodes an interesting, fun, character-driven mystery that brings stakes into the equation while praising how it fits into the Star Wars universe. Beholden to nothing except being Star Wars, Acolyte, the Acolyte soars. It's an interesting, fun, character-driven mystery with real stakes that you should care about, bolstered by all the fixings that make it Star Wars. It's all the first two episodes, and I love them. Mm, love them. All caps. Next one from comic books. Jamie, I think, Girac? Girac? Uh, see, it says, I've waited so long for the Acolyte and I cannot believe how much it's living up to my expectations. I love the first two eps. It's so exciting to see new, well, old era explored in live action. Leslie Headland did a dynamite job flesh lighting out these characters. I'm obsessed. Oh my God. I think, I think these are lies. I think, this, yeah. These, I, I don't know. How do you feel about this, man? Yeah, these sound like, these sound like compensated statements, not sincere ones. Oh my god, it's so good! That, that's 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 it. Like they came out of the. It feels like the Rings of Power before the first before season one was released. You know, with all the loot bags and like, my girl Galadriel. That's what it feels like. For me. <laughs> that's what it feels. Well, here's like for the me. thing. This is this is. I think that you cannot give a proper assessment of whatever media you're consuming is because this is access journalism. Yeah. Right? You get early access to gaming, uh, movies, and TV shows. I know movie critics, I guess that also, but some like, but the thing is that sometimes if you say bad shit about their movies, TV shows, or video games, they won't give you that access uh, journalism anymore. You won't get early yeah. access to the, that. So a lot of people feel like they are beholden or, uh, you know, forced to say nice things about it. It's like, all right, we'll only like, we'll, we'll let you see some of our new shit, but you can't say anything bad about it. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. Like shills basically. Right. So here's another one. Uh, the movie podcast, Anthony Gagliardi. Had a mixed experience. It's four episodes into Star Wars, The Acolyte. It's a mixed experience. The lore hints at uh, KOTOR potential, yet pacing occasionally lags. While fight scenes are engaging, they often feel misplaced, hoping to see stronger performances and a clearer narrative direction soon. Now, the thing is, I guarantee they they actually like queried and looked for one that's mixed, so it doesn't look like it's all good, right? So it's not like it's it's, it's because it's curated. So the thing is that this person said the fight while yeah. the fight scenes are engaging. Have you seen the fucking slow action? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, I, I posted an article on on a post on X. They're make I think they're making a Kotor TV show. So that's another Star Wars <laughs> Star Wars IP that's gonna get destroyed <laughs> uh, by Lucasfilm. And that's the one that everyone is actually like waiting yeah. for to do. That's what people right. love, especially the, the two games, right? The first two games. Yeah. All right. So next one is from Joe De Deckelmeyer. Okay. Kill Bill vibes. Star Wars, the acolyte gives me Kill Bill vibes. Every episode left me wanting more in a good way. We've seen so much about the fall of the Jedi, but this show explores what the Jedi were like during peacetime, which is quite fascinating. Amanda Stenberg is outstanding. Yeah. To be honest, I, I thought I thought Kill Bill was an okay movie, but yeah, great. Sorry, cut you off. Yeah, it's fine. It's like I was gonna say, like something tells me they're gonna make it like, oh, the, the Jedi in this show are they actually did scummy stuff. That that's my feel. Then the Sith actually tried to do good shit. Yeah, the Sith is actually the good guys. Good right? guy. Yeah, that's my feel. <laughs> that's one of the plot lines of this TV show. 
I'm gonna call it. <laughs> oh man! All right, so Perry ne- uh, Perry Nemiroff, I know who she is. Uh, from Collider says I've seen four episodes of the Acolyte, and thus far, it's a very big wiener. <laughs> Sorry, winner. Uh, the cast of the characters, the heavy emphasis on practical effects, the stunts, how they're exploring what it means to be a Force user, and how the Jedi Order operates. It's all working quite well for me. And she follows up with Amanda Stenberg. Is the headliner a story like this needs? She's got her hands full with this one, and she soars tackling the challenge. I could also watch her command the screen during fight scenes for hours. It sounds like fake shit. This is like scripted yeah. shit. That's um, this sounds yeah. so. Oh man. Yeah, a, a fight <laughs> choreography can only last for a couple of minutes at best. You mean to tell me you're yeah. gonna watch a lot? If they could even get Ahsoka right. Remember that final episode where Ahsoka's fighting the the witch? Yeah. It's like the witch was like intentionally slowing herself down for Rosalia, right? Because like the witch was like a professional. She was she was a legit ath- athlete in swordplay, in martial arts. And Rosalia was wasn't really. So they were you can see that she was slowing down for her. Just so it looks like she's dominating or they're, they're on equal level. Yeah. And it wasn't good to begin with. It wasn't cool. It wasn't cool at all. Yeah. See, let's finish this up. Let's say she also continues with uh the precision and grace with which May fights makes the combat exhilarating to watch, but also function as beats that speak to who she is and how she chooses to operate uh give in the given moment. Uh man, screen rants Caitlin Tyrell, the acolytes is fantastic. It captures everything that is great about classic Star Wars while feeling new and unique. The fight scenes are phenomenal and the visuals are stunning with an intriguing mystery and a top-notch cast is the very uh is this the very show that Star Wars fans need to watch. Another one uh from Flash Films. This I saw this first two episodes of Acolyte. I loved it. It felt so much like classic Star Wars while at the same time feeling new, fresh, and different from everything we've seen before. I think everything is like say this, but in a different yeah. way. Yeah, say this yeah. paragraph in your own words. Yeah, that's what it feels like to me. Jeez, Jesus, man. But yo, super base with the five gifted memberships, man. Thank you, thank you, super base. Thank you, thank you. Holy crap! Thank you so much for the super, uh, for for the soups, man. And and, and the freaking, uh, you know, you get super chats and the, and the gifted memberships. Everyone, thank you, thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, this, this yeah, this is crazy. Another one it says, um, uh. The Acolytes is a blast, gripping noir style murder mystery in a in a galaxy far, far away with Jedi as space detectives. What the fuck? This sounds like a different movie or tif- different yeah, TV exactly. Show. Noir murder mystery. So much world building and fleshing out the mythology already in the first two episodes, punctuated uh, by some pretty kick butt fight scenes. Yeah, but by, by, by the time it reached to this person, she ran out of words because everyone else said the same thing already. So she had to put a new one. Oh shit, what do I have to say? <laughs> All right, the last one says the first two episodes of the Acolyte are Star Wars a homage to classic Star Brothers movie while also opening new doors to a larger universe. The characters are fun and the action is great. This show has a lot of promise. Super excited to see where it goes. I feel like this is this is all fucking like shill, access journalism. Say nice things about it, or we're not going to give you. I'm surprised John Campia is not here. <laughs> yeah, he should be. Oh after the- man, I I think oh. he deserves it. I think he deserves. Yeah, John what, John Campio, did, did did you not like it? That's why. Did you actually say something bad about it? <laughs> is that why you're not in that list? <laughs> oh man, Gray. I think that the, I think this show is gonna yield a lot of content, and is it is it yeah. coming out all at it, once or is it gonna be a, a weekly? I get the feeling it's still episodic, given like it, it's still Star Wars after all. It's still so if it's like it's gonna come out on June four, so that's June five for me. So mm-hmm. that's still a ways off until we go live. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do the same thing as what I did with Mandalorian season three. Like episodic three minute takes on what I felt about the episode. I, I'll I'll try to do that. I'll try to do that because like okay. Tuesdays, yeah, Tuesdays kind of far off to when we go live. So that's plenty of time for me to do it. Yeah. 
Oh man, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised. Yeah, someone mentioned in the chat. It's like, and then they haven't even talked about the LGBTQ stuff yet, right? I'm surprised yeah. no one says like, "Oh my God, there's so many LGBTQ representation in the show." I'm so horny. There's this bonus holes and stuff like that. Oh, I can't wait. I guarantee, like, they're like, "All right, do not mention anything about LGBTQ stuff. Just talk about the show and what you thought about the show, and use this paragraph as your template." <laughs> because if you, if, let's let's see if someone here says about like, "Oh, um, I can't believe the main character is having a bonus hole." And uh, and she's basically filling it up with the new sausage or some shit like that, right? But people are like, oh, I'm not, we're not going to fucking watch this shit, right? Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.